This is a video to explain how to do a designer study question for a correlation. So at the end of paper two, you might get a designer study 12 mark question. And if it's on a correlation, then this video talks you through how to go about that. So you'll be given a stimulus and that will tell you how to get your marks and what kind of study it is. So this stimulus says, a psychologist noticed that older people appeared to have less accurate recall in eyewitness testimony. Design a study to investigate the relationship between age and the accuracy of eyewitness testimony. In your answer, you will be awarded credit for providing appropriate details such uh, of variables, directional hypothesis and controls, specialised materials and details of the procedure, and data analysis, including display of data and inferential stats, justify your choices, 12 marks. Now, I've made those very those bullet points up and you might get a correlational study that has those exact bullets. But whatever the bullets are is what you are guided by, because that's how you're going to get the majority of your marks. So these are kind of common things that you might see in a correlational study that you need to do. So just a very quick bit of general info. As I said, you'll be awarded most of your marks for covering the information that is bulleted in the stimulus, but you will also get marks for being realistic and that the study can be implemented. A common problem is that most people forget to justify their choices. So be aware of that. Uh, you will mostly write in continuous prose and I recommend to my students that they generally use the bullets as subheadings because that will help the examiner see what's going on and also guide you. So how to start it? Before you um, use the subheadings, I would write a couple of sentences just to set out what you intend to do because that will show the examiner that you've got a very clear idea of what's going on and it will also help guide you on what's going to happen, especially with a correlational study because people sometimes try and turn it into an experiment. And with a correlation, you are simply measuring two covariables. So you'll end up each person will have two scores and then you're seeing if there's a relationship or an association between those things. So I would put for this one, in this study, I will investigate the relationship between age and the accuracy of eyewitness testimony. Each participant will have their age recorded and then all participants will watch a video of a violent crime and be required to answer questions on it to provide an eyewitness testimony score. So keep it simple. This is a correlation. You will, there is no IV and DV. You're not manipulating any of the variables. You're simply measuring the covariables and that set those couple of sentences will just to help set out what it is you intend to do. Then your first subheading is from the bullets. So variables, directional hypothesis and controls. And so the variables are covariables because it's a correlation. So the covariables are age and accuracy of eyewitness testimony score. Now it's asked you for a directional hypothesis get it into your head that this is a correlational hypothesis, not an experimental one. So your hypothesis is there will be a negative correlation between age and the accuracy of eyewitness testimony score. You could then add a little bit of information to say what that prediction means. So this means that the prediction is that, on, uh, that the older a person is, the less accurate their recall will be. That's not essential, but it really highlights that you know what you're saying. Now, the, the word negative, there will be a negative correlation. That's what turns it into a directional correlational hypothesis. So for a directional one, you're only going to say either whether it's a positive or a negative correlation. If it was um, a non-directional, you just say there will be a correlation. Um, and if it's a null, there will be no correlation. And then between the covariables. Um, and then it's asked you for the controls. Now, a control measure that's really good for um, correlations is a pilot study and you can use it for any investigation. Um, so you would say a control measure for this investigation is a pilot study and then to kind of say what that is. So a pilot study is a small scale investigation done before the real one where I will test the materials and procedures to ensure that all equipment is working and that the materials are fit for purpose. Um, and then say what some of those things are. So I will ensure the video of the violent crime is the correct amount of time and has appropriate content, because if it's too long, people may lose interest, which could impact on the accuracy of recall. 
I will check the questionnaire so that it's accurately measuring recall of the crime. I will also ensure the room is appropriate and not distracting. And then your general controls. So you kind of then put in just things that you're going to keep the same for everybody. So general controls will, will be to ensure everyone sees the same video at the same volume in the same room so that everyone has the same opportunity for recall. Your next bullet point subheading is specialised materials and details of the procedure. So the specialised materials is basically a shopping list of everything you need to carry out the investigation. So here I've put the specialised materials I will need for the investigation include a suitable room with video playing equipment, access to the internet, speakers, uh, the questionnaire to measure the accuracy of eyewitness testimony and pens to write down their answers. Or you might go crazy and write um, a laptop or a tablet to record their answers. Um, and then I will also need to record their ages on a table that shows both their age and the eyewitness testimony score. And then the details of the procedure. Now, the really important bits about the procedure are to say what it is you are going to do exactly. But you could include some other details as well. So, for example, I've put in this investigation 20 volunteer participants, which is a realistic amount. Um, so 20 volunteer participants from social media who have consented to take part will be read standardised instructions about the task. You could say there why you've chosen a volunteer sample and it's because the video of the violent crime um, will require is quite unethical. So a volunteer sample is the most ethical um, way of sampling, getting your participants. And I've put the consent form will record their age, which is the first code variable, but they will not be aware that this is a significant part of the investigation. And you've put that and you could say that's because, you know, you don't want people to know that we're testing age because that will um, make people try and maybe concentrate more or be aware of their age and maybe feel a bit like flustered. Um, they will then watch a video of a violent crime for 10 minutes. Again, that's realistic. Um, they will, and after of a, after a break of about 30 minutes, they will individually fill in a questionnaire to test the accuracy of recall. They'll be given a debrief after the investigation because they were unaware that, that their age was the thing that was being investigated. So you've got a lot of detail there. The most important bits are saying, you know, that they're going to watch this video for 10 minutes, that realistic amount of time, and then be questioned on it. But, you know. You, this is for 12 marks, so put in a few details of that procedure. Last bullet point says data analysis, including display of data and inferential statistics. So the first bit we're looking at is the display of data. And I would say I would record both their scores in a table that shows their pairs of related data, see table below. And then I draw a table, because and you don't have to input the data if you don't want to, but you have to put like participant, like one, two, three, four down the side, and then the co-variables of age and accuracy of eyewitness testimony score go at the top. Now I've filled in the data, You and if you're not sure about data, have a look at it. You can see here that the younger a person is, the better their score. That shows shows a kind of negative correlation, but you don't have to. Also, I've only put in eight rows. You could just draw an arrow to show that there would be more rows for the different participants. And then still on the display of data, you would then put, I would then display this data in a scattergram to see if there is a pattern in the data. So you're showing them that you know that correlations use scattergrams as the display. Now, I put this into an Excel spreadsheet. You're not going to be doing that in the exam. Just sketch it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Label the covariables on the axes, put a title and then just put some various scatter points to show in this case a negative correlation or if it was an investigation that had a positive correlation you would show a general um, dots showing a positive correlation. If for a very bizarre reason you've got tons of time at the end of the exam which you shouldn't have but if you do you could plot the data on it um, that you'd had in the table, but you don't have to. The last paragraph is covering the inferential statistics. So you'd need to say to test the significance, I would use a Spearman's row statistical test. And then you justify why you're using that test. So in the, this case, this is because it's the data is ordinal. And then you acknowledge that although age is interval ratio data, because it's got a specific unit of measurement, the eyewitness testimony score is ordinal and we must select the least sophisticated level of measurement. 
So we go for ordinal data because one of the co-variables is ordinal. So therefore, that's what you go for. Um, it's a test of association and then just say what those co-variables are. So between co-variables of age and accuracy of eyewitness testimony, and it uses pairs of related data. And then you could say as shown in the table above. And that's it. That's how you do it. So your job now is to do your revision out. And what I mean by that is this video, listening to this video and looking at these slides is your revision in. The content knowledge is going into your head and you're thinking, oh yeah, I get it, that's quite straightforward. But it's very different thinking I know something to actually being able to write a 12 mark question. So if you write the 12 mark question now, and I know it's not appealing because <laughs> I wouldn't fancy it myself, but if you do it now, if a, a designer study for a correlation comes up in the exam, then you're going to feel much more prepared. Even though those bullets might be slightly different, you're going to feel um, much more able to complete the task. So good luck and good luck in your exams.